Fighting games can be really hard sometimes. It can bring out the worst parts of yourself. And if you're tired of losing, you came to the right place because today I will be giving you five tips to get better at Mortal Kombat 1. The first tip that I want to talk about is finding your main character. And I think it's really going to depend on your play style, your strengths and weaknesses as a player. And those are all things to keep in mind as a player. For me, for example, I really love high damage characters and I really love grapplers. So for me, for the characters that are grapplers, Reiko would be one of them. He's one of the characters I like to play. And like for high damaging characters, another example of a high damaging character would be someone like Lee Mei. She does like, you know, 45 to 50 percent damage with each combo extremely powerful for you on the other hand let's say you are a more of a keep away kind of player right so maybe someone like katana you know is more your speed or someone like Chang sung right and what i said before about strengths and weaknesses for me i'm a player that has really bad defense so having characters that can absolutely maximize the damage output is something that i always look for since i don't um have the best defense so right now i'm playing a lot of baraka and i play him with strikers so you know it leads for like very low risk but a lot of reward you know if you're a more experienced player you can play someone like kenshi who's you know extremely top tier or you could play someone like uh johnny cage if you have good execution that really opens the door on who you can play but i'm assuming that you're a beginner if you have a rushdown kind of play style Liu kang is a good person to start with um, if you're just starting out in mortal kombat 1 uh, another character i would recommend for beginners would be someone like scorpion he's not exactly the best character in the game right now but i think he's a relatively solid character to pick up now do you find this annoying okay now you have a few options here right you can like stand one it and you can like down two, you know in some situations right but sometimes when you try to do this shit it sometimes gets stuffed right and sometimes it, it feels like there's not a whole lot you could do against it now i know what you're thinking the jumpings are so good what am i supposed to do against this it's so op all right slow down i got you let me show you how to deal with this shit okay okay all you have to do just unblock that shit now pretty much what i'm doing is just i'm holding block and then i'm holding up on the d-pad okay and then the cool thing about up block is you get a full combo punish right now forgive it for being a little laggy but you get the point okay if you up block it you pretty much get a full combo punish and fortunately you don't lose a lot of damage when you punish things this way the cool thing about up blocking is you can also up block certain strings for johnny cage for example you can up block like that in the middle of his string and get a full combo punish pretty nifty huh now it's going to take some labbing to figure out what stuff can be up blocked in certain scenarios but that kind of thing you know comes with time but yeah that's up blocking make sure to use this inside of your games and it's going to make your life a whole lot easier especially when you're fighting against really good jump ins like johnny cage for example now i want to take a second to talk about footsies now footsies in like street fighter terms it's pretty much your crouching medium kick into your hadoken for mortal kombat the equivalent of that would be something like like this but you don't see a whole lot of people pl playing like that because mortal kombat's a little different but characters like reiko can do stuff like this down four into you know his um projectile now going back to the topic of footsies pretty much it's this whole game right here pretty much controlling that realm pretty much using your feet to control 
Now your footsie buttons are going to be like down one, down three, down four. And pretty much that leads to pressure and offense. And um, also leads to different like defense tactics that I'm going to show you guys right here. So I'm going to set Johnny Cage to mash down one. Right. You probably fight against this a lot. So in this game, it's pretty cool because down ones are pretty much punishable. So it's like they're super negative, right? And the whole goal of this like footsie game is to make sure you're the one who's getting the hits and you're blocking the pokes. So if you get hit by a poke, probably a good idea not to mash on hit. Okay. Your main goal for like controlling the footsies is to block and take your turn. So we block and then we take our turn and then we follow it up with pressure so we could do shit like this. So you block, then you follow it up. So you're going to block and follow it up with pressure. Just like that. Now, Baraka is pretty cool because he could cancel special moves after his pokes. So if they try to poke in between this, they're going to get launched. So he's set to mash down one. So he's going to get launched for um, not blocking my down one. Okay. And um, another aspect of footsies is using projectiles to close the space. And pretty much another term this could be called is zoning, right? So for your opponent, you want to make sure that you control everything. You control the airspace, you know, with your up blocks and your jump ins. You control it with projectiles and you're pretty much trying to communicate to the opponent that this is not their space this is yours okay and you do that with buttons you do that with pokes and you do that with projectiles okay if i could offer another example i'm going to show you guys a little footsie trap that baraka has i'm going to show you guys a little footsie trap that baraka has some buttons have pushback to get your offense started let me show you so that's a good example so pretty much I punished him for pressing down one. So when you're playing footsies, you're looking for those opportunities to like just pretty much watch them miss their buns, right? And this also applies to like, like whiff punishing as well. So let's say we see Johnny Cage with this button, right? So we're walking around and then he misses and then I whiff punish. So that's like another aspect of footsies. And these are all important things uh, to keep in mind when you're trying to control the space around you. Beautiful. God, I love that fatal blow. But that's footsies in a really fast nutshell. There's a lot of layers. I could do a more in-depth guide if you guys are looking for that uh, kind of content. But pretty much control the space in front of you make sure you are the one that is in control of everything that's going on around you now i want to teach you guys the concept of jailing jailing pretty much means is when something has a really high hit advantage and then you follow it up with another button that pretty much jails that situation where you cannot push buttons in between that little segment if you will so for example now let's say i down one right i could follow it up with a 212 afterwards now if i jail this correctly if the opponent gets hit by down one this pretty much means that this right here this button right here is guaranteed okay so now i'm gonna set baraka to mash down one which is his down jab oh no i didn't let me show you guys Okay, I'm going to show you guys the example of it. So that jails. So he's mashing down one, but he can't get out of it because he is like in hit stun. Okay. So since that jails perfectly, they can't do anything other than block. Now I'm going to show you guys from the other point of view.
Now I'm going to try to, to gel with Baraka. So that gels. Okay. What else gels? Could I do... Oh, I tried to do back three, but that didn't work. Okay, hold on. See, I'm trying to back three, but it doesn't gel. Okay. So pretty much if you land any hits, you have to know what button to follow up after that. Or else people are just going to down jab you all day. And that's going to be annoying. So if you see someone that's like jabbing you to death, it's because you're not gelling your shit right. Because if you're gelling everything, you should not be getting like double poked or anything. Okay. And that's if you land a hit. Now, jailing is going to be different from character to character. So now it's up to you to go inside of the lab and figure out which buttons jail. Now, lastly, I want to talk about optimals. And I don't know if you've ever been accused of combo spam, but I just want to point out that is not a thing. Okay. Pretty much what optimal means is maximizing the most out of every single opportunity. Okay. So... For example, if I land a 2-1 button, what is the absolute maximum damage I could get out of this situation, okay? From landing this button right here, okay? So l let's say I do a combo that's not so optimal, right? Let's say I do something like this. Okay, that's a bad example. Hold on. Let's say I do something like that, right? 30% but is that maximizing the opportunity of landing this button it's not so what is the optimal combo here in this situation it would be this okay now that does 35% okay so and optimizing every single situation you know comes with time and practice so Learning all your character's optimals, I think, is a great starting point to, you know, learning a character and learning them well. Learning all your optimals for your characters is something that I think is going to be really important before you take your character online, okay? You just want to make sure you're able to maximize every single opportunity that you have. If I could provide another example, what do you think is the optimal situation after a 4-3? So... Sometimes people could do something like that. It does 20%, but maybe we could get more. Maybe we could add this sequence after. If I don't drop it. Oh my god. Okay. That does 26%. Okay. Those are the kind of things that you need to keep in mind. Am I getting the most damage out of this combo? Or was that an optimal choice? For this uh, specific example, I'm talking about optimal combos. But if we're talking about optimal situations, that is a whole nother layer. And that is the kind of mindset you need to have is how much damage can I possibly get from this starter? Now, for this tutorial, I'm mostly talking about combo optimals, but there's also situational optimals when you're playing against other characters, but that comes with time and learning matchups, which is a whole nother video in itself. Okay, now I think I'm going to end the video here. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I would love to address those questions and make you guys better players. I really look forward to making more tutorials and content, so please give me some advice. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Captain Crispy, and I'll see you next time.